Welcome, welcome, welcome to another delicious, delightful uh, episode of uh, The Sound of Succession. I'm Jamie East. And I'm Chris Mandel. Sorry, Sorry I was late this morning. I was just busy. I was just on an IV. I've just uh, drained half a litre of blood uh, to freeze into a brick. And now I've sent you 30 already. It was yeah. a joke at first. Then it stopped being a joke. And I kind of feel like it was a joke again. Mm. It's not a joke anymore, is it? I have been meaning to talk to you about this. Okay. Uh, I haven't got any room in my freezer for my fish fingers, so okay. you need to stop it with the... Um... Okay, I'll, I'll stop it. I'll yeah. stop it. I won't sack you. Um, I know you're pregnant, but would you like some cocaine? I... <laughs> the way that they didn't even acknowledge that, that they were that's doing what ri- That's how rich people do drugs. Yes. Okay, let's just talk about that very quickly, and then we'll go back to the start. Yeah. They didn't even reference they were doing it. And yeah. Shiv spent about seven minutes getting a little bit on her tiny little spoon. Um, and that made me laugh so much. Because I thought the whole thing was going to be, is she going to do coke just to like be she one did, of the boys? But she didn't do it, did she? I don't think we saw her do no, it. No, I don't think she did. I like to think that even <laughs> that would be too low for a Roy. And I, <laughs> so I try not to go on my phone when I'm watching Succession. But I, and I'm aware that I'm going to sound like a massive idiot. I was Googling, can you do coke when you're pregnant? <laughs> only, only, a mil- only, only a 30 year old gay man would, 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 would Google that in all <laughs> honesty. It's like, actually, I don't know. This might be a thing. <laughs> I thought it might be like red wine where it's like the science said no <laughs> now. Yeah, Women now, are now you can have half a glass decisions. of red wine in your first trimester. I wonder if that's the same with a bump <laughs> off a key in a pub toilet. <laughs> also, thank you for calling me 30. <laughs> 30 ish. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously, no, it's not a good idea, but I thought, hey. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? What, who knows anymore? Uh, but the thing is, well, look, if you can get Mike, if Michael Jackson get his doctor to inject him with whatever the fuck it was that Michael Jackson was injected, when you're rich, your doctors can uh, can smooth corners on anything. Yeah. Also, this kid doesn't have to be intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> or even, yeah, or even have enough oxygen in its brain. Oh, my this God. He doesn't need to have, make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> Oh dear! Right, Sorry. okay. Re rewind, uh, as the go crowd back. say. Go select. Um, right, great episode. We've not really spoken about it at all. We've literally just pressed record because we were about to start doing a pre pre chat about it. And and I, you said what a fucking great episode. And I said had a little bit of everything, didn't it? And it really, it really fucking did. did. Oh yeah, it had. Okay, let's go through all the things it had. It had the siblings yep. going at each other's throats. Mm-hmm. It had. Everybody flying to an exotic location. Yeah. Uh, it had someone pissing against a rock on a very high, high mountain, which is <laughs> quite a recurring thing of people just like urinating in inappropriate places. Yeah. On yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. What else did it have? Um, it had, I mean, in terms of themes, it had just everything. It had desperation. It had mm. sadness. It had pathos. It had anger. It had farce. It had... Mm-hmm. Um, you know deviance it had yeah just it it was it was fucking great and it also it, had a twist that i feel like we didn't we didn't even anticipate no. the main thing in the episode which is matheson also wants atn and and you know we talk we we have a lot of time to think about this and you suddenly go oh shit that is a spanner in the works like yeah. this is changes everything well because we've been so We've been so obviously so caught up, as have Roman and Ken and Shiv, in mm. in the death of Logan. Um, so, yeah. So we've we've not been thinking about Matheson really, or his angle, or or actually, as it turns out, his seemingly not just a kind of personal. Oh, I'm just going to spend my bills on on this. Mm. I think there's 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 something going on there. We learn that there's multiple layers to Matheson as a human being and not all of yeah. them, not all of them, the, the, uh, the, the healthy fit, clever Scandi that we thought yeah. on top of that, there's, there's under, there, there are seemingly underlying business pressures on him as well. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know, the whole, if I had to pick a theme for this episode, everyone 
bar none in this episode at one point was terrified. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I kept thinking of um, like everyone's like on a di- trying to get on a life raft, or there's like yeah. only a few life rafts on the sinking ship, and they're all you've got the kill list at the end of the episode, which we'll get to later. Yeah, but you've also got the siblings going like, oh my god, this guy is this Matheson guy is actually terrifying because they can't get into his head. And yeah. I think actually the show has been really clever with not using him really since last season. But even then, it was quite sparing, and so. You've got this guy that we he's a bit like a Terminator because you can't you don't understand how he thinks, we don't understand how to hurt him. No, you haven't got as so much money as him. There's such a big cultural and divide between the two such, of them anyway. Yes, yeah. It's, it's so sides. important that he's a Swede. Because I think the cultural clash in this episode was what was so confusing. And whether like they were all happy to go to like the staff disco or to go into the saunas together or to drink, they were you know, they felt like <clears throat> just so like a unit yeah. and all of the Americans just felt like these bickering little yeah. rats but that it, were it, all fighting over scraps of food. Didn't you find it comforting that even when you're a multi-billionaire, like top of the exec pile, yeah. a works away trip are all as bad as each other. Yeah. They're just, but I would, I would love to go on that trip. I mean, hang on a sec. Let's, let's not deny that that place was was like literally a dream place. And then yeah. and very early on, you know, well, they had, they, they just didn't get the beauty of it at all. It was just kind no. of, it was small. It was, but it was and that's think... like, they're standing in the most beautiful, like chalet I've ever yeah. seen with a running river going. It's just like, uh, Oh my beautiful. God. Beautiful. And Ken was just like, the rooms are small. The room yeah. is so fucking small. Exactly. I can see Roman from my window and this is all, you know, they're used to having their own penthouses. They're yeah. just not used to this. And the scale of it is really interesting because the whole point is that it's like you're in nature and we've not, we've built all these cabins, but like we haven't disrupted, we haven't pulled any trees up to do it. Yeah, but yeah. to them, it's like, oh, you could only build a small cabin. That's yeah, really yeah. lame. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the culture thing was what was so fascinating that that like the, the Waystar just do not have retreats they don't have corporate wellness they don't have like well they ever done a, have they ever done anything like that they did the golf thing for uh, in, in the pilot episode we haven't really seen i don't think i think the company's too big thing. i think the company's too big and i think it's not logan's way logan no. wants you to constantly fight for your job whereas you know this yeah this this company is all about hey like holistic like even if it's bullshit which it kind of is because as we know from meeting Ebba, who's Lucas's uh, head of comms, you know, she's yeah. been, she's his ex-girlfriend and she's getting sent bricks of frozen blood. Even in this sort of Eden, there is loads of, you know, people, yeah. men being cunts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's still kind of such a culture clash. And that, yeah, that, that was what made it so enticing that these guys just yeah. haven't got a fucking clue how to, how to be. Um, mm. But yeah, I think you're right. I think tension and sort of um, terror were just, top of the agenda yeah well we open with it could have come from season two could have come from season one yeah. Ra- rap on the stereo decent shades are back on um, kendall back in his suits i mean kendall. the kendall of season three is like dead and buried right yeah he's corporate ken he's the boss he's the boss walks the boss. in gets an gets an applause <clears> which <throat> kind of startles him uh gets additional manpower which he says can the additional manpower fuck off until i need them which was which was great um he, uh Hugh, am I, it's just Hugh, isn't it? Am I, am I saying it right? Who? Yeah, Huey. No, what's his name? The um, the guy with the big plate of food at the buffet. Oh my god, I'm uh, going... Hugo. 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 So, oh my god, sorry about that. Hugh, I, half right. So Hugo, Hugo, kind of like trying to. Oh, we can do this. Should we get a photo of this? Um, and, and Kendall was just like, should we not do the bad version? It's like, oh yeah, yeah, let's not do the bad. Ce Bros. That was the idea. C. What C. was Bros. it? Yeah. CE Bros. <laughs> <laughs> CE Bros. <laughs> Which is funny because, you know, last episode it was like, we've got to keep Shiv in the decision making. And yeah. obviously, you know, the C suite are like, what if it's about you two? Yeah. You know, well, there was a lot Roman, of that in this episode. There were quite a few points in this episode where Roman actually, you could tell Roman is still playing the Shiv game where where he, he wants her involved and thinks she should be involved. It was mm. him that kept calling her in. Oh, where's Shiv? We need to get Shiv in. And, and you could see that Kendall was just like, who? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah okay, fine. He yeah, looked yeah. cross as well a few times when they weren't able to. I, I felt like 
there were times when it felt like Ken and Roman, it was like a seance where they were trying to channel Logan's ghost. Yeah. What do we do? What do we do? And Roman's going, let's get Shiv. And I just don't think Ken liked that. I thought he no. looked quite sour quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, so, so what's bubbling? Short range top lines. Um... Yeah. The interesting thing is that they get sort of summoned to this retreat, don't they? And yes. All they of them as well. So everyone. Not, yeah. So they knew that they were going. But then all of a sudden it's like, and again, this plays into the, to the, they all thought it was a power play by Matheson. Um, whereas actually, I think someone actually said it. It's like, no, they want to get the deal done. It's like, yeah, they, and as it transpires, he needs to get this deal done a lot Mm. more than actually a lot more than, than, than Waystar do. You know, they were kind of like, why do they want everyone here now? Why? And the whole kill list thing, the whole kind of sizing up and working out who's doing what. They've already figured out like who they're bringing over. Yeah. That's how, that's how, that's how quickly they need this to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's all there. And they didn't see it. None of them saw it. That was it. They they no. just they were immediately kind of like, oh, what's this fucking genius doing? He's going to fucking eat us yeah. alive. And right, we've I got think to... also the kids see it as really insulting. And hmm. I thought a lot of this episode was about them just really struggling to adapt I mean, to being in charge. It is really insulting, and we'll come on to that that final speech from the monologue from Roman later on. It is insulting. Their dad died two days ago, two yeah. fucking days ago, and already. Yeah they're having to fly over to to Sweden. Yeah. Like, I meant though, also insulting in the sense that they were like, why can't us three just go? Why yes. do they need Jerry? Okay, why do they yeah, need Frank? Yeah. I think it's very like, we don't again, need someone to hold our hands. But Logan would have seen through that. Logan yeah. would have gone, he's fucked. He needs us all there. He wants to do the deal quickly. He's desperate. He wants, and he, all, sm- he wants to size everyone up and he wants, and it's a bit like when they met the Pierces in yeah. season two. Yeah. We want to see how you interact, how you fit into our world. Are you going to mm. go in the sauna? Or yeah. Are you going to sit outside bitching? Yeah. You know? yeah. Are yeah. you going to play with bow and arrows or are you going to just, you know, scuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom yeah. shoot? You know, it's all like sizing people up. And I think it, it, the kids just saw it as like, we're, we're the new dad. We're the new Logan. Like we can go and go, do this deal. Yeah. And we and and I thought all of it was fascinating that they just couldn't provide a united front. There was no, like constant like Tom turning on Greg, Shiv turning on Tom, Jerry, Hugo, Frank, all getting shut out of, of conversations where they would be an asset. They didn't even go on the same jet. Yeah, two planes. You know. Yeah. Well, Greg was um, on the Greg was on the other plane as well, wasn't he? Yeah. I um, okay. Can we just very quickly talk about Greg? Yeah. I am convinced. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think you're right. Is going on. I think you're right. You're they absolutely are, right. He is in. First of all, they are meaner than they've ever been to him, mm-hmm. and I think it's. I think it's weird because he's. You know, there was talk, talk of him leak his journalist date leaking stuff, but I don't think it's that. No, they're being way meaner than they need to be, and he's inserting himself into conversations that even he knows he shouldn't be in. Yeah. Like, they're just not going to be nice to you. Stop trying to be their friend. So I think something's going on. And I'd like to know what, if you have any thoughts. There was about, also, about yeah, I, I agree with you. And I don't know, I don't know what, but the fact that there was the, there was the moment where, you know, the script is so lean, you know, every word counts as we have said before. Mm-hmm. And yet they took the time in this episode, in this packed episode to spend like, a 60th of, of the episode talking about reestablishing who Greg is and what his standing is in, in the scheme of things. Yeah. There is no reason for Matheson to have a fucking care or a clue of who Greg is. Yeah. And that scene with Tom kind of like was, 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 I think was, was a pure mechanic to get Greg into the conversation because there was no other way to get Greg at that table with those guys Absolutely. without Tom calling him over, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I completely agree. And, and, and the, the, like, yeah, I was, he's, Ewan is Logan's brother. Yeah. I thought Ewan was Greg's granddad. Is that right? He's he called him Logan's nephew, which made me think Ewan is his father, but that can't be right. Cause I thought the joke was that Greg's dad was secretly gay. Cause Ewan used to always be like, your dad was like sucking people's dicks such and such early on 
Maybe it was just like a throwaway where Kendall doesn't doesn't really know. Yeah, because well, Matheson called, was like he's called cousin Greg, so he's 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 the kid's cousin. He's the kid's cousin. So yeah, yeah. hang on a sec. That would make him Logan's nephew, would it? Am yeah, I, I... that so would. Is you and his uncle is you and his. So whose cousin is he? Is he so cousin Greg? Right, hold on a sec. Oh, hold on. Here we go. He's the first cousin once removed from uh greg hirsch is logan's uh great nephew right so he's a great nephew right great nephew and in this episode they just said nephew because i yeah, guess yeah, just because when you a, get to that level doesn't really matter you just start saying you're on yeah, the yeah, outer yeah, you're on the perimeter yeah yeah okay, yeah, yeah. okay that makes sense so I thought, yeah. yeah really interesting that they really hammered that in he's uh, he is a logan descendant as well yeah and i thought hard to sort of get a sense of it because even with the subtitles they didn't subtitle the swedish but when they started making fun they started doing all these like they started making fun of the family by, by the in sound swedish things, yeah yeah in swedish that seemed to be the thing that really fucked ken and roman off where it was like mm. whoa 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 like we can make fun of greg but you can't yeah yeah, yeah. but also just we have no way of cutting through this yeah because you can you can speak our language and we can't speak yours yeah um it was so what do we think what do we think greg is it, well, we're being greg, reminded how important he is well we're certainly being reminded that he that, that he's an established kind of role in it he got mm. brought into kendall kendall in, invited him in again to mm. do his dirty work it wasn't park yes. coke this it wasn't park coke this time it was um no. it was it was leaking like, take doing leaking info a, taking a, a burner phone and leaking which yeah, shiv like and shiv has seen shiv has seen through this like straight away she didn't buy at the beginning with the stories that hugo kind of leaked that he was instructed to at the end of the last episode of all gone to press shiv was just like what the fuck are you doing you know isn't yeah. this strange and you know she doesn't buy any of any of like kendall's denials of that yeah, um, that was interesting because obviously last episode, yeah, Ken said he was going to start sort of besmirching slightly. And we saw him use that uh, in this episode saying, you know, it, Logan's presence has not been important lately. Yeah. It doesn't affect the deal. Like we're, yeah, 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 we're yeah. the sort of connective tissue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his attempts to sort of like sell stories to the press and sort of have anonymous sources hasn't really. His no, family, and I wonder if Shiv doesn't seem. And I wonder if all of that is just to upset the apricot with Shiv. You know that it's a really interesting dynamic yeah. at the moment, and it's on a knife's edge, and it's it's kind of teetering all the time. There was the bit where, you know, Kendall and Roman were really tired, kind of like re, you know, trying to get under the skin of Matheson on the plane, and Kendall said, "What did he say? Oh, we're death wrestling with ogres here." And Shiv yeah. just said, "Shiv was just like, no, you're reading documents, mate. Yeah. Have a fucking word." And, and they're trying to like understand the company, like they're trying to. It feels like they're trying to almost they may as well be looking at like a, a painting to try yeah. and understand. They're like, what does it mean? Like, what does it say that like the, the film studio is down and the cruises is up and the da 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 da. But I think they, they're trying to understand Logan. They're trying to. I thought this so much this episode. It was like they're trying to be Logan by going, well, I've got I'm dressing like this. I'm flying yeah. in the jet. I'm sitting in his seat on the jet. And no, they right. still can't make head nor tail of like his instincts. They just don't have his instincts. And well, that's the, that's the, the thing is, is, is that they're there looking for the method. Yeah. Whereas Logan's already told them there's no method to it. It's madness. He said, and it's it just feels right. And, and that's, and Logan said yeah. that in the, at the end of season three. And I think just... the biggest thing that like, yeah, that's sort of that commits to that idea is when they are, Talk, you know the, the c-suite are like guys what's the tactic hmm. ken just writes down a number one four yeah. four it is it is that is the number anything yeah. higher good anything lower bad and they yeah. just had no concept of what if he says i'll give you a higher number but i want atn they just yeah. hadn't even entertained hmm. because they don't know how he thinks and they don't know how they think and i think that yeah. was the big battleground was like not do we want to run a news company it's do we want to sell dad's legacy to someone who sees it as a load of parts or yeah. do we want to i mean continue his, the legacy yeah i mean matheson's takedown of uh at the table about the part shop was just fucking brilliant it was so yeah. so good because it was yeah. just absolutely true you know 
the movie that they were trying to get them all to watch. What was it oh, called? What's it oh, called? It's Calipstron. called Calip- Cali- Calipsatron Hibernation, Calips- which is a three-hour <laughs> movie about a sleepy robot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there he's was asleep for two hours of that three-hour movie. <laughs> and there was, a, and there was a movie poster in in <laughs> Kendall's office as well behind them called "Eric is a Spinner," which I really want to watch. I don't, I don't, I don't care <laughs> what. What was the one? In, like, in, oh, maybe in season two there was this old gag about a film they produced called like the world's biggest turkey or something. Oh God, yes, there was, it was something really. Oh. But it was like moderately successful. Yeah. It was just, but all of that um, was kind of window dressings, you know, they were talking, but the, you know, and look, without shitting where I eat, I've been in meetings with huge, in my, in some of my, in some of my former lives, I've been in a boardroom with mm. billionaires who don't understand the toxicity of their brand. Mm. Um, and I've had to argue the case that maybe certain elements of their their portfolio isn't as well liked as they think it is because they have no yeah. fucking clue. Yeah. Um. So for them to argue that the cruises like is like a is is an ace up their sleeve, yeah. given the fact that it's it's I don't know they may as well have Jeffrey Epstein fucking running it. Right. It's just like it's just it's just insane. And then using trying to like smoke screen oh this move is a disaster but don't worry we've got it it's just so complicated it's not you know it's just really not but what they're doing is they're they're trying to make the content seem king because mm. that's what they've got matheson's got the app they've got the content that was what logan's yeah, deal was yeah, all yeah. about the the it seems so interesting that this episode is this week given that on friday buzzfeed news closed yeah like forever yeah and that company is now buzzfeed the like non-news stuff huffington post complex they have an e-commerce platform they have all these different bits and pieces now they have tasty the cooking videos that they sell homeware through that you know media companies are made of parts and some people use those parts to make some things but when you sell them you can take those things apart and build new things they're like mm. lego bricks really yeah, yeah, yeah and and it's just also interesting when you think about the fox dominion lawsuit last week which got settled fox, yeah yeah fox said the problem with the election was the voting <laughs> computers malfunctioned and the company that made them said um we are not going to be responsible for this insurrection that happened on the 6th of january yeah that and was on you was this, yeah yeah they were like hey, you can't just say it's our fault what if you didn't call the election and it's been a really interesting case study in how a company weaponizes and then doesn't know how to stop weaponizing its media arm. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what Matheson was saying with ATN. He was like, I want it yeah. to be more Bloomberg. I want it to be gray. I want it to be a little bit less angry. And yeah, they I mean, sort of think, <laughs> but dad wanted it to be like this. We can't the, have it change. But there's the rub. There's the rub. What did he say it was? It was small men with big veins. And then Roman said, but fat wallets. Um, and then Matheson says, yeah, yeah, I want it to be a bit more Bloomberg. The problem is his idea is just as bad as as ATN is right yeah. wing because yeah. Roman's right. Yeah, have the fucking ideological CNN slash uh, Euro News slash yeah. whatever you want. Great. You'll sleep better, but you won't make any fucking money. And that is yeah. the problem in news, you know? Yeah. That, yeah, if B- exactly. If, B- and, and like, if BBC you know... News were a commercial enterprise, it wouldn't make a fucking penny. No. And also, you know, I think what I got the impression was he's, he was like, I'm not trying to make the next Bloomberg, but this is how you sell. This is how we get people to buy into us is that we're about to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's going to be profitable long term. I'm saying this is a short term game. And this is, again, every time and you and I have seen this firsthand, companies lay off and they go, look, we have to cut 10% of the workforce, but this means we can be really lean and it means Mm -hmm. we can be really agile. And so we're going to now do this. And then when that changes, they go, look, we just need to cut 8% of the workforce and then we can zig over this way. Yeah. And that is what gets advertisers to not cash out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I just need, it's like, it's like a telemarketer. Like I just need you for two more minutes. Well, it's everything that Twitter, it's everything that that Elon with Twitter hasn't done. Yeah. Basically. But, yeah. but it's really interesting. And I think, you know, they can't stand the idea, like, 
they would run ATN into the ground. Let's be clear. They yeah, would yeah. not make yeah. it in Logan's image. Because they've so not the got idea... news in their blood. They, they haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing. Also, bear in mind, like three episodes ago, they were going, okay, we need to, when they ha- were looking at Pierce, at PGN or PGM or whatever it's called, they were watching it in episode two and they were going, okay, it needs to be like pan-African. We need to lose the old. They were trying to do that to Hyper-local. Else's... You'd watch that, They were trying you? to do that to someone else's company. And when yeah. someone tries to do it to ATN, they're like, no, 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 you can't change it. But that is exactly what new p- people come in and they go, I don't like the color of the, the logo. I don't like the speed of the Chiron going across the bottom. You know, they are just as susceptible to this. Um, but I, I think once, the idea I once, of... uh, Just on that, I once exec produced a, an entertainment news program in america yeah. and first day i was in charge of everything carte blanche okay. do whatever you like i changed okay. the color of a strap like the graphic that comes under yeah. and uh the owner cried <laughs> i've been in the <laughs> who, who was it can you i can't tell you i can't say on air i'll, I'll tell you off air, but yeah that's um... so funny <laughs> i mean it's it's so yeah the idea of them, of him making any changes to ATN, all they know is that Logan wanted ATN. So they want ATN. Yeah. They yeah. don't know what they do with it. And, and you know, the share price. So I had to write this down just because I was a bit like. Oh, so it's so at 144. The offer, the, the original offer was 144, right? That was what, yeah, that's what Kendall wrote. Share price, yeah, per share, 144. So they go, they then, settle for 145. Yeah, and then he offers 187. I think. Yeah, which is like and they're going, which is an extra, crazy. which is an extra 30, 40 percent. Yeah, but then that says, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, I feel like I'm on Carol Ward of an account down here. That is 33 dot extra dollars per share just for ATN, which I does seem a bit odd, right? Because it's a yeah. news organization. And then when they sort of later on, when they push back even further, he goes up again to 194, and it's mm-hmm. like, no, I I will just. So I'd love to know like what it actually would be in terms of billions. Well, I mean, what the company's worth because I found it hard to put it into hard to work it out. Like, yeah, I mean, I think and you, like I don't think you'll be alone. Whatever. I think a lot of people will be thinking, have they just sold it for one hundred eighty seven, one hundred ninety four billion? I mean, billion? that's what I thought at first. Yeah. So, so because it's a publicly traded company, so I mean, you have to. I mean, we don't know how many how many shares there are. You know, but it's going to yeah. be, you know, if you look at similar deals, it's going to be 50 billion. You know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's yeah, Twitter, yeah. it's Twitter sized, I would say. It's, yeah. It's the same kind of bit. I would imagine the same kind of impact as if someone bought. Fo- it's like, it's like Elon Musk buying Fox now. Yeah. You know? That's what it, that's yeah, the yeah, equivalent yeah. of it. If he still had 20th century Fox. And I think, um, I was just thinking, I'm sure Murdoch bought the Wall Street Journal for 70 billion. Is that right? Maybe. No, uh, oh, no, no, no. Wait, no, that's wrong. He bought it for like seven. Because I think we talked about that when we were talking about the yes. deal. Uh, if anyone's asking <laughs> what that noise is, it's me typing. I'm Googling. Uh, we had another email complaining about the typing. I'm just they? Googling. Yeah, someone else got cross. Sorry. Did they get crossed? Yeah. I quite like typing. What is that noise? Yeah, anyway, I, I, I guess the point is, you know... Actually, when you he bought it for five billion dollars. Sorry to interrupt. He bought it for five Wall billion. Wall Street Journal. Yeah. And Fox sold to Disney. Twentieth Century Fox sold to Disney for about seventy, I think. Yeah. That was just check. A lot of zeros. Uh, they uh seventy-one point three billion dollars. So, good to, yeah. so that's 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 a chunk of change. Um, um, but but I do think the show. I do feel like you don't have to follow the money that closely. No, it's just a, because you can see everyone's reaction to it. What they're really fighting over is like Logan, Logan's legacy, Logan's soul, Logan's you know, um, and yeah, that's the thing. They they sort of they think about it, and eventually they decide to tank the deal. Um, it's night time. There's been axe throwing. There's been uh, the Peking Duck sauna. Um, before we move on can we just give the comedy is great in the show and and but it's some sometimes you know the greg stuff we've we've said you know we both said has felt a little bit ham-fisted on occasion very rarely but hugo's moment in 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 this at the buffet table where he suddenly finds himself bereftly standing there <sighs> greeting people with the largest plate of food ever 
pastries and flatbreads. <laughs> and like, oh. There was like there was there was bread, sweet stuff. There was meats. There was cheeses, salmon, is, gravel axe. Just yeah. you, and people were just piling on his plate, just like dumping him. So he had yeah. to. It was just such a an amazing really little, kind of like really moment little where, where he looked down and realised it. Uh, and uh, so he, his, he met his equal, who is the the version of Hugo on Maxon's team, who is also yes. like an Olympic ski jumper or something. Oh, and had to do that brilliant thing. I, I got told that you <laughs> almost came third. That's almost really good. <laughs> That's almost really good. Though. Oh, those damn milliseconds. It was great. They're so, all of Maxon's team is so hard to read and it causes, you know, I mean, I, I'm, they must have a cousin Greg on their team. You know, must I'd love do. to have met. I'd love to have met him. But they just had that. Um, but but it, they they played it exactly. Whenever you know, and I love like I love everything about Scandinavia. I love the countries. I love the aesthetic. I love the clothes. I love the food. I love the people. They're all mm -hmm. handsome bastards, and they just had that conf that that European North Nordic European confidence yeah. in their own. Yeah. In their own kind of their, their low center of gravity with the world yeah. is just like just so self assured. They're not wearing great. designer white trainers to no. the retreat. Did you oh. hear Ken say to Roman, "I got dirt on my sneaks"? <laughs> did you catch? Did you catch um, Shiv spotting the, the Tom's trainers at the beginning of yeah, the episode? Yeah, they're, they're all on a molly come down. Their pupils are dilated, <laughs> and your trainers are so bright it's like staring <laughs> at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> we've not we've not got it in fact we're, we're, we're jumping ahead because there was that brilliantly like violent uh release of of frustration with shiv and tov with shiv shim and tov shiv and tom um <laughs> where she scuffed his you know she does what we've all wanted to do when we see someone with a pair of white trainers on and she just goes fucking scuffs them and he immediately flicks her earlobe and says her earlobes are meaty and thick meaty and chewy like a meaty mu muscle like barnacle meat. A barnacle meat <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> Who the that fuck is one of the, thinks of one of the meanest meat? things you could say about? I think that is so mean because also it's like I bet Shiv was like, "What's a barnacle?" Yeah, is that is that like an oyster? Yeah, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't like even an oyster. Poor people oysters. Yeah. Poor people oysters. Uh, they had some really interesting scraps. Obviously, he still doesn't know that she's pregnant. Yeah, um, but yeah, he, um, where I where are we? Where are we with the episode? Sorry, I just, I just. Where have we got to? I was just talking about their kind of like their set to where they were kind of like annoying each other and flicking each other, and and you know where she just really went all out. She was like, "Oh, Matheson's." And, oh, this was after actually. Sorry, I beg your pardon. This was after her tete to tete with with Matheson, yeah. wasn't it? So well, she looked really like embarrassed to to be to know him when he was failing to talk about French politics with them, and I think again, like <laughs> they just know, like these guys don't have a fucking clue. And then yeah. Tom ropes Greg in, who tries to pretend that he reads The Economist. Just pretend, there was a moment, right, where he thought Greg had cracked it. I thought, fucking uh, hell. Yeah. He's going to go, yeah, well, there's this thing in The Economist, and actually the thing with I, Francis. Yeah. And then he just yeah. went, he had baguette, or he had nothing. It's baguettes to bagels or something. <laughs> I thought it was actually interesting, because I, you know, I, I wouldn't say I've met many cousin Gregs in my life, but I have met people that are approximate. And... He probably would actually be quite well read. They say you know, if you walk in a room and you can't see any cousin Gregs, you know what that means, don't you, Chris? Oh no, I'm the cousin Greg. <laughs> You're not the my, cousin Greg. My family are just yeah, northern barnacle farmers or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it's. I thought he would be kind of maybe a little more well read than he is. Um, so I was, yeah, a bit disappointed. And I thought that was going to be the gag that they drag him in and he goes, well, it really depends, you know. But Tom's line was something like, and it sort of encapsulates ATN's view, which is that like, it doesn't affect us. It doesn't matter to us. Like We don't care. We've got our own Paris. Cares? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just build a new one, which yeah. is, is a very American response. And, um, and yeah, shit, I just thought Shiv looked so like, like oh god that guy and let's talk about the matheson scene with her because i thought it was yeah. an amazing bit of the episode one of my mm. favorite bits um kept thinking complete that, curveball i mean no i wouldn't say there was any sexual energy and yet the sexual energy was off the charts <laughs> like, yeah, yeah oh no it was definitely sexual energy but it, luke when you get the kill list at the end of the episode most of the men are off it yeah right 
except uh, Tom. Except Tom. Greg was not mentioned. I think Greg will be not on the kill list. I don't think he was even no. senior enough. To, he's just an well, executive assistant. Yes, but, but like not being big enough to even be on the list is a good way to make sure you're not on the list. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Which yeah. is yeah. really good. Yeah. But anyway, the thing I was going to say was the women were all kept on. And Lucas got close to Shiv in a way that I think was kind of just his only way of breaking up the trio, which didn't mm. need much breaking up. But also, she did a really good job with him. Yeah. She's often been portrayed as a bit of a, a shit CEO. And she's not Logan, but like she's able to do more. She was sort of a, a bit of an advisor and a bit of a confidant. And I thought she was really smart. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah well, she was because there must have been two sides of her brain working at the same time. On one mm -hmm. side, it was like sucking all this information because we've got him now. You know, this yeah. is, this is usable. This is perfect. This will fuck him over at some point down the line. We've got him. And then at the same time, she was just like, I can help you out of this. I am valuable to you. Oh, by the way, so's Jerry. So's, um, Carolina, uh, Carolina. Yeah. You know, um, that's probably why they're on the, they're not on yeah. the kill list. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, 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 yes. So Oh, that is clever. Yeah, so she so he's That's now got so he's got rid of everyone who who he thinks would fuck him. He's turned it's, it's basically we 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 realize that Matheson is no fucking better on any level than those guys. No. Um, His business is not news, it's not films, it's not cruises. He is in the business of making money because he's yeah. like a tech pro. And so, also it's human. And he's got yeah. kink and he's got problems and he's got and he's skeletons just also in the closet. Like, he, he's, yeah, I thought the, yeah, the, the kind of, he seemed really human. I mean, he's still so dangerous because he's just got more money than anyone. <laughs> and he's also, I think, just like a different generation of rich. He was, and I he think... was, Zuck he struck me as quite a zuckerberg -y in that scene mm -hmm. where there were moments where he just didn't, there was, there was, the, there was the line, I think Shiv said, she says, right, okay, here's your three-point PR plan. Number one, mm. you've got to stop sending her your blood. And he was kind of like, yeah, okay, point, okay. let me just oh, write shit. this down. <laughs> okay, right, stop. You know, because all through, it, he'd, he'd like had these kind of like witty retorts. He didn't mm. want to shift just before, he didn't want to roam. And it's just like, oh, wait, you're saying if I came, if I keep offering more money, then sooner or later, they, later they'll take it. Well, that's clever, like taking the piss out of them. And then mm -hmm. shifts her around. She was like, okay, rule one, don't send bricks of float frozen blood to your direct reports. And he was like, yeah, okay, this is good stuff. And, this and is, just zoom stuff. out. Like, I know yeah. you think it's a joke. Yeah. But like, it doesn't read funny. Yeah, to he has else. no, no self-awareness or concept. Scrutiny of that. from the US media is going to be on you, and you need to. Yeah, it's really she's good at branding. She's good at mm. images, and uh, she's optics. good at yeah. optics. Yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. And the other kids, Roman's never needed that. Uh, Ken has never needed it, and she has because she's had to figure out. She she's the kind of the one that had a job outside of the firm. So yeah. I thought it was really which is all about and, and, po and politics is all about the optics. You know? And that's why she was the one that got the tip off. Also, while Ken and Roman were having their deal with Matheson, she's yeah. the one that got the tip off that Menken has been jumping on the daily, the, the morning briefings at ATN. His team that's has been right. on yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're like, look, this is really bad. Yeah. Which this is why. This is not good. And Sid, which is probably the saving grace for Tom. Which is, you know, exactly, so, okay, so get, that explains then why all of a sudden she's kind of like, why don't we go out for dinner, you sexy little thing? And Tom's just like, wait, what? What the fuck? You know, do you want to sack yeah. Sid? You know, all of that is purely She because... realizes that if she sticks with Matheson, she might get made head of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she needs someone in her pocket to handle ATN, and yeah. that's Tom. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, such a, it was a great, great. Really great, interesting. Great and I love, because I've never... I, Shiv's always down on her luck in the man's world and in the Roy family. And she's, she's not as thick as people think, but also Matheson hasn't got an equal that is not a man. So to have someone come in and be like, kind of impress him, but in mm. a different way. Yeah. I also think he strikes me as the kind of guy that because he spends so much time online and because he spends so much time on like the dark corners of the internet, I think he is a raging misogynist and I think he's dangerous. And I think he underestimates women, but that is something that Shiv has been able to manipulate. I think she sort of knows 
he's not the biggest feminist in the world. Yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. might stand her in good stead. And I think, yeah, it was a I've... really good scene. It just it was great. Really electrifying. And then we had a bit, a bit of a kind of epilogue to that where in any other in any other kind of like hookup, that phone call from Matheson saying, send me a picture would have been asking for a pair of tits. In fact, he did ask for a pair oh of tits. Yeah. He did ask for a pair of tits, but it was Kendall and, Ro- Kendall and Roman. And, hey. you know, send me, you know, that was, do you know what I mean? That was, that was quite in, an intimate moment between the pair of them, wasn't it? Yeah. And she, the fact that she did that for him is yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Because I, do you know what I thought when I watched it though? Asking for a picture of their faces when they realized that, them trying to fuck him over, fuck them over. Yeah. Getting a picture of that is a, such a Logan Roy thing. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's what she responded to. It's so interesting with Shiv. She always wanted a man who was like her dad. Mm. I don't know why she's with Tom because his, he's too soft. His corners are too soft. He's not, you know, difficult enough. She's grown up with this angry, difficult man as her father mm. and she's got with Matheson she's got this like weird man to sort of try and like dance around and I think yeah I think it's going to get sexy and sexual very quickly I think she's going to get fucked over like by the end of the series but I think it's a really yeah. fascinating like yeah definitely development well, look, um, <clears throat> let's talk about go that amazing the, the the mountain top uh showdown which was just fucking incredible. I think uh, I don't even really know where to begin. So they had no plan. The plan, like the, the, it was on the sheet of paper, like you say, it was you know higher than one four four, lower than one four four, whatever. Or, and mm-hmm. the let's talk about what led roman to get into that state of mind, which was this this little sidebar throughout the episode of connor of connor being. In, like arranging Roman's uh, Logan's funeral, which we can expect to happen in the next couple of episodes, I think. Uh, it seems as though, um, but Marsha had intervened and insisted that, Ro- that that Logan's body that he's dressed in a kilt. Now, why that's a problem? Don't know. The guy was fucking Scottish, um, but there was some conversation that needs to happen. So it's a bit of a weird kind of like MacGuffin to kind of get inside, get under Roman skin, which, but it did, you know, don't send me a picture. Don't send me a picture. It was already fucking with him having to think about his dad dead and his dad's body lying there cold on a slab somewhere. And then seconds before they arrive on the mountaintop in the cable car, Connor just sends him a fucking picture of his dead dad, yeah. which you just hear like, air, you hear the airdrop noise, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dropped it at the high, like, highest point in Sweden or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it, um, Connor, Connor, bless him, has been given the the emotional labour of dealing with it, and the, the the kids are just not interested at the start of the episode, are they? No, they're they like think yeah. of it as a burden. We're not going to shout Shib, at you. Whatever you decide, you've got full. Shib you know, literally says, "What is it you are wanting us to do?" Yeah. Right. And yeah. You know, poor Connor. Uh, they're they're sort of saying whatever decision you do is probably going to be wrong, but we don't want to help you make it any easier. Yeah. And so Connor, and this is what we were talking about at the start. Like everyone's turning in on each, on each other. There's no united front. So when this airdropped picture, which I presume is of Logan's dressed body, I guess comes through to Roman. It just freaks him out. Yeah. And it makes him realize that this has been, you know, last episode he said, I think I just pre grieved. <laughs> I've yeah. done all my grieving. Yeah, I did it already. Yeah, they've all been grieving at very different points, and he yeah. just hearing Culkin was amazing. He just kind of fell apart, didn't it? He? Just knocked him for six. Yeah. So all through that, and, and all through that scene, you know, before before we got to that bit, you know, are you Scooby doing me here? You know, he saw through all their bullshit, and and yeah, right up until the moment that Ruby that that Roman flipped. He was just in full control of the whole thing. He was just like, you know, fuck you. That's the price, blah, 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 blah. And that, you can see, you know, just Roman's face just turning. It was just like, I'm going to do it. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. And you heard, you know, Ken just go, Roman, Rome, stop, you know. Mm-hmm. And in that instant, he turned into his dad and he terrified, yeah. uh, he terrified Madison. He's just like, I fucking hate you. Yeah. And meant it. Like a, a sadist, what did he say? Sadistic uh, dog. You're an inhuman, like inhuman fucking dog. Yeah. And he said that 
because of because of the way you've been behaving, you killed our father with stress by making him come over and fix this. Yeah. And it, it was it was so intense. It was it was really intense was, and really yeah. yeah. The thing I found really fascinating because I think Roman has such a complex psychological structure as a person, right? Yeah, yeah. Matheson's having a piss against a rock, which yeah. is again such a machismo, like such a yeah. Power it's movie, a literal right? a literal dick swinging contest. I'm gonna yeah. literally piss. Roman goes, sits on the rock, facing him, pissing on, yeah, facing him, and it's something like really. You know, he can't make himself bigger. Like, Skarsgård is like... Skarsgård but he made himself people... taller. Yeah. Yeah. But Skarsgård is so tall that he makes people that are six foot three look short. Mm. Like, he's a big lad. Yeah. And I just thought the way that Roman just unleashed it, it was just incredible. And I don't, I don't think you could... I felt there were times when you were like, ah, he can't control this. Mm. It's just... It's like gushing out of him like a yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... You know, you're watching it thinking, oh, my God, they fucked the deal. But all they've done is show just how emotionally welded they are to this deal, not in terms of – there's no business, you know, sense here. No, there was no – well, as I think uh, there was a bit of an ADR overdub where they were waiting for the cable car where, where they had to get it in. I was like, uh, I wonder how SEC – SCC appro- approvals would 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 what would they would think about that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, oh yeah, when they were going that, back down. Yeah, and am I right in thinking that helicopter was Matheson? He took yeah, he was like front. fuck them. He just like zoomed off. So, I, I think my take on what happened then was that they just out negotiated him. He just you know all along. He was just like, these guys will sell. They need to sell. They need to buy Pierce. What he hadn't counted on the fact was that they're all fucking mad and that he had really, really upset Roman. So they were just like, you know what? I fucking hate you. I don't care. Fuck you. We're already rich, which is something that Kendall had said. Yeah. You know. He's like, you actually can't give us any money we don't already have. Yeah. Um, um, so so he, they both called each other's, they both called each other's bluff. And the Roys had just decided, yeah, we're not playing this anymore. Fuck off. And he was just like, shit. And the only, and he zoomed off in my mind because he needed to speak to his board to say, fuck, I've fucked it. I've ballsed it up. Um, we need to offer them another 15 pence on the pound, another 15 cents, another $15 on the, on the share. Um, which but yeah, and, it would be an extra. It would be an ex, like an extra fifteen dollars per share. Yeah, which Huge. was just which is a fucking lot of money, um, which caught everyone by surprise. You know, he was he couldn't even bring himself to speak to them directly, so he phoned Carl, who was also on the list. So like mm. Carl's last job for fucking <laughs> for Waystar was to tell them that he'd made a load of money. So but he was happy. He didn't give a shit. He was like, let the good times roll. Yeah, Madison couldn't even speak to them. Because he'd lost, you know, they'd beaten him in a negotiating deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he'd got ATM. But, but like, uh, yeah. So do you feel like Matheson's lost in that yeah. sort of, in that far? I feel like in, well, he he got what he wanted, which was ATN and the whole, yeah. the whole, the whole shooting match. But he lost in terms of, he had to pay a fuckload of money for it because he didn't have any choice. There was no wiggle room anymore. Now, you know, even when they were sat at the table being nasty to each other and speaking in their own language and this, that, and the other, mm. and like, you're a fucking tribute band, you know, which was, you know, all of that, all of that stuff was going. They ended mm. it with going, let's get it done. You know, let's work our way through this. Let's work our way through this. We'll get this done. Let's, you know, are we okay? Shiv was like, are we okay here? No, we're okay. We'll just, you know, blah, blah, blah. At the end of when Roman walked away from him, there was nothing more to talk about. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, though, that, like, I think he, Matheson knew that the conversation was going to be explosive, which is why he had it on top of a mountain. Because yeah. earlier, they were like, let's just have it out here with it when he had all of his soldiers around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That conversation would have sunk Matheson if it was around his people. And I yeah, think he yeah. sort of knew on some level we have to have it away. Yeah. But I think Matheson really got what he wanted because they said, we're going to drag this out over months. Yeah. And he got them to do it. But I also think... Because Ken's right. He said, look, we're already rich. They're not doing it for money. He's bought the piece of the company that had Logan's soul in it. Yeah. No, and it's fair quite, point. Um, actually, really weirdly, like the other night, um, I was watching an episode, a really old episode of The Simpsons. 
because uh, that's the only thing I watch on Disney Plus. <laughs> There's an episode where Bart sells his soul for ten dollars, right. five dollars. He writes right. Bart's soul on a piece of paper, sells it to Millhouse, and he starts to have this like psychological breakdown because he doesn't think he has a soul. And it just reminded me of that episode because yeah. they've like, yeah, they've got a really good price, but they've lost the bit that their dad wanted, and so they're mm. like, that. I think that is going to be the that's going to haunt them. Um, maybe, maybe, but. On the flip side of that, what what's happened is that Kendall and Roman, in the eyes of everyone on that plane, are now business fucking legends. Yes. They're going to go down in history books, yes. and actually, they did nothing. Yeah, they, they, did, completely... they got the thing they didn't want. They got yeah. the opposite outcome. Yeah, but, but know, I still right, think, in terms obviously... of, I think that I think in terms of Kendall and Roman versus Matheson, they won that for sure. He. Because his last words to Roman were just like, "You've just fucked it." Mm. You know, he was still he was still playing bravado. Whereas actually, yeah. he he'd lost. He couldn't. He cannot. He could not have lost that deal. There's something I think we'll find out where where Gojo go, Gojo Bo blah, blah blah are in some trouble, or there's something that they needed to to happen mm. because he I couldn't this, lose that deal. Alan they, Menken stuff is going to be really bad. You know, there's yeah. a reason we've been doing the maths. Every day is an episode. Mm-hmm. The the election should be the finale. You yeah, know, these are the reason. Yeah, Matt, this Menken's been sitting in on the calls. That's why Sid's going. You know, it, that is not what uh, what Lucas Matheson wants. He doesn't want a far right network. And no. I just think something. I kind of was wondering actually this morning. You know, in season two, there was like a satellite exploded and that ended up happening with Elon Musk's rocket like the other day. Yeah. I sort of wondered if there's going to be some weird like far right. What, like, Jan the Sixth type thing. Some insurrection inspired like. So yeah. I just think something, the, the, the politics is sort of, it is what could sink Matheson's fortune if he's, a, if he's tied to ATN and ATN is toxic. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah, the really possibly. exciting thing is you think you've bought Logan's legacy, but you can't change it. Like it, it lives and dies with Logan. But yeah, it's just an amazing episode. It was I, fantastic. I yeah. It was what great. Else? Is there any stray bits we missed? Anything we um, sort of... just? I don't think so. No, Not I don't that think I can so. think of. Um, I will tell you what. I tell you a quote I liked when um, Frank and Carl were wouldn't go in the um, the sauna. Uh, which I loved. Yeah. They go, he, uh, he goes, um, Carl says, poor bastards hanging in the window like peeking duck. That's great. It was very good. I, um, I don't like that. Looked lovely, that sauna. The kill list who survived. I mean, just as we discussed, the women, the, the women survived. Carl and Frank are fucked. Frank was just, Frank seemed to be kind of like, well, it's only a, it's only a pen. It's only a pencil. It's not. Nothing's confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Carl was just like, "Let the good times roll." Carl's just thinking, "Buy my fucking shares." He's got that shares. Greek island, doesn't he? Yeah. Isn't he's got that, the Greek island. Him, his brother-in-law. Greek, yeah. yeah. Um, um, there was a few people in there, like some guy called Mark, who was in the plane. He was like, "Oh God!" Like, who the fuck are you? Who is that guy? I mean, he was just one of the PR team, I think, wasn't he? he was all must part be, of Carol yeah, and be. Hugo's team. Um, but yeah. You know the Tom's the compression kind of... socks. I like the compression oh. socks scene. That's one thing we didn't we didn't say was when they Listen, get on the plane. It must have been the first time they've all got on a plane since Logan's death. All the yeah. old geezers yeah, are yeah, like yeah. blaming the compression socks. Listen, that was great. I thought I just thought they such a fucking good detail because they yeah. you know Tom's looking at them like how lame and they're going, well, do you want to die at the toilet this you know on this journey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know we're at a certain age where you've got to <laughs> focus on your compression. Yeah. Um, Great episode, loved it. Great episode. I, shall we I watch think... the? Uh, shall we watch the yeah. teaser trailer? Let's do it. Let's do it. Section episode six already. I just can't get over it. I can't either. Here we go. I'll see you the other side. All right. Hey! Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah! That looks so good. So they're doing so... obviously doing a big kind of board presentation yeah they're selling and... it to the, they're selling it to the shareholders ah oh, so matheson's yeah. over in new york or uh a bit at the beginning uh i thought i thought i was having a flashback to ken's party organization so he's having a ha- wanted a small hat plywood house built sort of a, maybe like a scandinavian inspired 
Tim, like a plywood house. Some kind of like ill-advised kind of like theatrical uh, moments going to happen. Tom's cottoned on. Tom seems to have cottoned on to Shiv and Matheson's closeness even more. Yeah, Um, they took a plane together. Yeah. Uh, he could Roman s- seems to be on the set of the, you know, their film, of the movie a lot. He seems to be on some, uh, some studio lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, Shiv, I think Shiv getting close to Lucas is going to be. It's going to be great. I mean, oh. do, do we think, no, it's, it's the time frame won't work, but I was like, are we going to have a, who's the dad? Like, is she going to mm. claim she's pregnant with his kid? Um, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, right. and, uh, as, as the, uh, as, as the three old, as the old wise one said, Kendall's got a gleam in his eye. And, Dangerous. Uh, I'm having flashbacks to when Carl was having to stand. Was it Carl or Frank? Having, when they're all having to do oh, the stand-in, waiting for someone to arrive at that presentation before, waiting for someone the, to turn Logan up. When Logan had his UTI, when they were sort of all trying oh, to build Oh, he was pissed time. mad. He was pissed mad, and they were all standing in at the conference. And then, then you saw Kendall kind of coming out of the shadows and standing behind. Oh, oh God. We love we love a presentation. We love a deck. So good, amazing. Deck. Well, I'll see you in the boardroom. See you in the boardroom. I'm very much All looking right. forward to it. Uh, <laughs> with my memory foam hard on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring the coke. <laughs>